Welcome back dear 6th grade students and let's start the second term with the first unit force and motion this unit talking about a new concept that's called levers so in this unit we're gonna study what's meant by levers also we're gonna learn the types of levers and law of levers so let's start with the first lesson types of levers first of all we want to know what are levers Levers are simple machines that help man to perform heavy tasks more easily. So they make the heavy tasks performed more easily. As the manual broom that is used in cleaning. So the manual broom makes cleaning performed more easily. Also as the hammer claw or the scissors. All of them are simple machines and also all of them are called levers. Now we want to know who is the scientist that described levers. Levers were first described in 260 BC by the Greek scientist who is called Archimedes. Now let's study levers in details. As we can see here in this video, any lever is composed of a bar the blue one, a bar or rod that turns on a point, fixed point, which is read here in the video, that is called fulcrum. Again, any lever composed of a rigid bar rotates around fixed point called fulcrum. So again, any lever is a sample machine, as we said before, made up of a bar or rod turns on a fixed point called fulcrum. And there are two forces effect on this lever. The first force is the effort force. And the effort force is the force that exerted by a person to equilibrate the second force, which is the resistance force. So we have here two forces. A resistance force resulted from the object's weight, which is here one ton. And another force exerted from a person to equilibrate this resistance force. So the person here tries to equilibrate the one ton resistance force resulted from the object. Now we want to know what's meant by lever. And we can conclude it from this picture. As we can see, any lever is composed of bar, the blue one, rotates around a fixed point, the yellow one, which is called fulcrum, and is affected by two forces the green one the effort force and the red one the resistance force that resulted from the load so again any lever or the lever is a rigid bar straight or curved this bar may be straight or curved rotates around a fixed point called fulcrum and is affected by two forces an effort force and the resistance force so again what's meant by lever it is a rigid bar straight or curved that rotates around a fixed point called fulcrum and is affected by an effort force and a resistance force now let's study together the structure of lever and as we know any lever is composed of three main concepts or three main parts we can conclude them all from this picture or from the definition of lever as we can see here in this picture we have three main parts uh, and three colors the red one the load or the resistance force the resistance force and the resistance force always takes symbol r what's meant by resistance force the resistance force it is the force that resulted from the weight of the body that we want to move or that we want to deal with Again, it is the force that resulted from the weight of the body and it takes letter R or symbol R. The second part, which has the green color in the picture, the effort force. The effort force and the effort force takes symbol F. F. F or an effort force, it is the forces that exerted by the person to equilibrate the resistance force. Again, 
It is the force that is exerted by a person to equilibrate the resistance force. The last part or the third one, the yellow one, the fulcrum. The fulcrum and fulcrum takes symbol O. O related to fulcrum. Fulcrum is a fixed point where the bar rotates around. It is the fixed point where the bar rotates around. Now let's talk about the examples of levers. As we can see in, here in the first picture, we have the seesaw. The seesaw is a lever. Give reason. Seesaw is a lever because it has rigid bar, rotates around a fixed point that's called fulcrum, and it is affected by an effort force and a resistance force. So the seesaw is a lever. Also, the stapler. Stapler also is a lever because it has a rigid bar, rotates around a fixed point, and is affected by effort force and the resistance force. So the stapler is a lever. What else? The manual broom, also a lever. The bottle opener is a lever. The wheelbarrow and the crowbar. All of them are levers because all of them have rigid bar, rotates around a fixed point called fulcrum, and they are affected by two forces, the effort force and the resistance force. Let's talk about the importance of levers. We have learned from the beginning of this lesson that levers help us to perform our tasks more easily. But how? This may happen by different ways, as increasing force, increasing distance, increasing speed, by moving a force from a place to another one, accuracy in performance, or avoid dangers. Let's talk about each one in details and take different examples about each way. Let's start with the first importance of levers, increasing force. How do levers increase the force? Some levers save our effort force, the exerted force by the person, by using a small force to move heavy loads, as the crowbar. Man exert a small effort force to move heavy loads by the crowbar, also by the nutcracker, which used to break nuts. We just use a small effort force to break the nuts. The second importance of levers is increasing distance. But how do levers increase the distance? Some levers allow exerting effort force for a small distance to move an object for a longer distance, as in the manual broom. In the manual broom, your hand moves a small distance at the upper part of the broom, while the lower part of the broom moves for a longer distance. So you can collect the garbage by using the manual broom, which increases the distance. Another importance for levers is increasing the speed. Some levers increase the speed of the object that we inflict on as the hockey bat. The hockey bat is a lever that is used in increasing the speed of the object. Also, some levers are used in moving force from one place to another or to move the object from one place to another place as the manual broom again. The manual broom helps us to collect the garbage from one place to another place without bending. Number five, accuracy in performance. Some levers are used to pick up very small objects as tweezers. Tweezers are used by doctors and watchmakers to pick up very small objects. And the last importance of levers is avoiding dangers. Some levers are used to pick up the hot, cold or poisonous materials as coal holder or ice holder. So the coal holder and ice holder are used to pick up hot, cold, or poisonous materials and avoiding any dangers. Now let us start to talk about the types of levers. Levers are classified into three types. Let's see them. 
the first class levers, the second class levers, and third class levers. But what is the difference between them? The difference is the position of fulcrum, resistance force, and effort force. So they are different in the position of fulcrum, resistance force, or effort force. Let's start with the first class levers, the most popular type of levers. As we can see in this picture, the fulcrum or the fixed point lies in the middle of the lever. So the first class lever are the levers that have fulcrum O between the effort force and resistance force. Again, as we can see, the fulcrum, the fixed point, which colored with yellow, lies between the resistance force, the red one, and the effort force, the green one. So this is the first class levers which have fulcrum between effort force and resistance force. Some examples for first class levers as the seesaw, pliers, nail clippers, the scissors, the hammer claw, and the water pump. So all of them are first class levers. Give reason. The hammer claw is first class lever because the fulcrum is between the effort force and resistance force. Give reason. The seesaw is first class levers again because the fulcrum lies between the effort force and the resistance force. Now the second class levers. As we said before, the three classes of levers are different in the position of the fulcrum, the effort force, and the resistance force. So as we can see here in this picture, what is the midpoint or where is the fulcrum or the resistance and effort force? As we can see, the resistance force is between fulcrum and effort force. So this is the second class levers that have the resistance force between the effort force and fulcrum. Again, the red point, which is the resistance force, lies between the effort force, the green one, and the fulcrum, the fixed point, the yellow one. Now, some examples for second class levers as the nutcracker. But why does the nutcracker from the second class levers? As we can see, the nut itself is the resistance force, which lies between the effort force, my hand, and the fixed point, the fulcrum. So the nutcracker from the second class levers, because the resistance force between the effort force and the fulcrum. What else from the second class levers? Some types of staplers. Also, the bottle opener from the second class levers and the wheelbarrow. All of them are from the second class levers. Give reason, the wheelbarrow from the second class levers because the resistance force between the effort force and the fulcrum. Give reason again, the bottle opener from the second class levers because the resistance force is between the effort force and the fulcrum. And finally, with the third class levers, which also different in the position of fulcrum, resistance force, and effort force. As we can see here, what is the middle point? Yes, the effort force. The effort force is the midpoint between the fulcrum and the resistance force. So, the third class levers are the levers that have the effort force between the resistance force R and the fulcrum O. Again. They are levers that have the effort force between the resistance force and the fulcrum. Now, some examples for third class levers as the manual broom, the hockey bat, ice holder, sweet holder, or coal holder, the fishing rod or fishing hook. And the tweezers all of them are from the th third class levers so give reason the tweezers from the third class levers because the effort force lies between the if the resistance force and fulcrum another give reason the ice holder is from the third class levers because 
it has the effort force between the resistance force and fulcrum and so on and now dear students let's check together how we can determine the type of the lever first determine the position of the effort force resistance force and the fulcrum then identify the midpoint of the lever and now you can determine the type of the lever let's see together if the midpoint of the lever is the fulcrum so this lever is from the first class levers if the midpoint of the lever is the resistance force so this lever is from the second class levers but if the midpoint of the lever is the effort force so this lever is from the third class levers now let's make a comparison between the three classes of levers the first point of comparison is the definition of each one the first class levers are the levers that have fulcrum between resistance force and effort force the second class levers are the levers that have the resistance force between fulcrum and effort force while the third class levers are the levers that have effort force between fulcrum and resistance force so what is the midpoint of each one the first class lever's midpoint is the fulcrum. The midpoint of the second class lever is the resistance force, while the midpoint of the third class levers is the effort force. Now with different example for each one. From the first class levers, the seesaw, scissors, crowbar, and water pump. From the second class levers, the nutcracker, wheelbarrow, and the stapler. And from the third class levers, the tweezers, hockey bat, ice holder, sweet holder, and manual broom. Now let's check some points and answer some questions as give reasons for. Let's see number one. The manual broom is a lever. Again, the manual broom is a lever. If the question about any lever, why it's a lever? Because it is the rigid bar rotates around a fixed point called fulcrum and it's affected by an effort force and a resistance force. So any lever is a lever because again it is it has a rigid bar rotates around a fixed point called fulcrum and it is affected by an effort force and a resistance force. Number two, levers are very important in our daily life. As we said before, levers make tasks be performed more easily by increasing force increasing distance increasing speed and so on so let's see the answer because they make the tasks be performed more easily by increasing force increasing distance increasing speed avoid dangers accuracy in performance and to move object from one place to another one number three the crowbar is considered as an increasing force lever because it used to move heavy loads by using a small effort force. Again, because it is used to move heavy loads by using just a small effort force. Number four, give reason. Doctors and watchmakers use tweezers as a lever. As we said before, doctors and watchmakers use tweezers to pick up very small objects as very small nail and so on. So the answer will be because it is used to pick up very small objects. Number five, water pump, crowbar, and seesaw are first class levers. To answer this type of questions, we should think about the midpoint of the first class levers. What is the midpoint in the first class levers? Yes, it is the fulcrum. So the answer will be because they have fulcrum between the effort force and the resistance force. Number six, Wheelbarrow and bottle opener are second class levers. Again, think about the midpoint of the second class levers, which is the resistance force. So, because they have the resistance force between the effort force and the fulcrum. Number seven, ice holder and hockey bat are third class levers. Okay, the midpoint of the third class levers is the yes the effort force so the answer will be because they have the effort force between the resistance force and the fulcrum now dear students we have finished the first lesson in the first unit 
So thank you and goodbye.